Hey, hey, party people, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do that famous slide transition that you see everywhere. And we get, we get asked this question all the time, how do I do that transition? I'm gonna show you how to build it in Adobe CC 2017, but you don't need CC 2017 to do this. Any version of Adobe Premiere will work. All right, so there's a couple different methods. I'm gonna show you um, two different ways of doing this, and I'm also gonna show you how to build your own preset once you create something thing, uh, something that you like and you don't wanna do it over again, you know? I mean, who wants to animate twice? Well, I do, but anyway. So yeah, let's get started. First thing we need to do is start a new sequence and stop looping, there we go. So file, new, sequence. All right, doesn't matter what you call it, I'm doing a 1080 timeline, you can work in whatever resolution makes you happy. Okay, so we've got a new timeline here and let's drag in some of our beautiful Shutterstock footage. All right, I'm gonna use this as my layer one. And no, I am not sponsored by Shutterstock. We get that question a lot. Uh, I license the footage just like everybody else. I just happen to really like uh, the company and their footage. All right, so that's layer one. And let's lay out some timing here. Let's say I want the, uh, the transition to happen at two seconds. So let's go here to two seconds, like so. And let's hit M for marker. And I want, for now, I want the timing to end at three seconds and add a marker. All right, so to go to your previous marker, it's Command Shift M on the Mac. I don't know the keystroke on the PC, I'm sorry. And, sh and uh, Shift M f to go forward on the Mac. I don't, again, I'm sure that's the same on the Mac, on the PC, but I don't know it. So if you do know the PC uh, strokes, please uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Okay, cool. So let's go grab that other piece of Shutterstock goodness, which is right here. And let's drag it in and have it come sync up right here with our first marker. Like so. Okay, so it's going to go wachaki, right? Okay, so how do you do this? Well, it's really simple. Very easy to make your own. Let's highlight layer 2 here and hit Shift 5 to open up your effects controls. Right here. Now, it's possible that when you open it, motion is twirled closed. Let's go ahead and twirl it open. And we're only going to animate the positional information. So right here, click on this stopwatch. And that's your first keyframe. Now let's go to that other marker, Shift M and go back to our effects controls and let's make another keyframe, okay? So this is what we're gonna land. This is the final keyframe. Click this button right here to take you to the first one and let's move the clip all the way past the frame line and outside of the frame like that. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out just to make sure. You can always scooch it back like to make sure that it's outside, double check, you know? All right, zoom in. So I'm outside of the frame line and if I just hit play, it's like la 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 la, boom. And that's the basis of your, uh, your transition. Very simple. It looks terrible, so let's fix that. I hate these linear keyframes. These things that hit the brick wall, like wham, wham, wham. I hate that, so let's fix that first. Highlight your second layer, go to this keyframe right here, click on it, right click on it, and change it to ease in. Now let's roll back. Ah, so nice. No more brick wall. Okay, that solves one issue. The other issue is this is not all that exciting. If you want just a positional animation, then you're done. That's it. Goodbye. Catch you later. But if you want to add a little bit more, let's keep on working. Let's start with a directional blur. Over here in your effects window, click on search and put in direction. And you'll find something right here under blur and sharpen, directional blur. Go ahead and drag it over here to your Shutterstock. And let's see. We're going to add some keyframes. So let's go to the very first keyframe here and add a blur length keyframe right there at zero. Let's go to the very end anim uh, keyframe from our position and again, add another keyframe. So we have zero and zero. You're like, why would I add two zero keyframes? Don't worry about it, hang on one second. And then right in the middle of your animation, right around here, maybe one more frame uh, right there. Let's add a really big blur. Let's make it, I don't know, 200, right? Okay. So if we roll this over this way, and it comes in, nice. All right, so now what, what's the issue? Well, the big issue is that the blur is a different direction than the, the way the clip is, trans, uh, is moving. Is. So, so the transform is left to right, right? So it's moving from left to right, and the blur is going up and down. That's kind of weird to the eye. So let's, so let's fix that. Right here in direction, let's go from zero and change it to 90. And now you see that the blur is going horizontally instead of vertically, and let's roll it back. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now you have the makings of a slide transition. If you wanna add a glow to this, or you can start stacking effects on it to make it your own, right? Now, here's, there's a couple things I wanna do before we move on to method two. I don't like how long it's taking. This is personal preference. I like this to slide in just a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And let's grab this keyframe. This is your last keyframe, and let's just cinch it in. Let's move it to about halfway. 
And I also have to adjust my blur animation because it's now uh, outside of the end of my animation right up here. So let's go ahead and move this in, move this into the middle here, line this last keyframe up with this one like so. And we're Jackie, we're done. Roll it back, hit space bar to play. Okay, that might be a little too fast. I went from, in my mind, too slow to too fast. This is all about massaging keyframes, so just grab these last two and maybe cinch them back just a little, move this to the middle, and this might be it. Perfect, this is my favorite timing, so just shy of a second. Cool, all right, so you said there's two methods. Yeah, okay, why I have a second method for this is right here. I don't like seeing a mat, a mat line. I don't like seeing the edge of the frame come in. Um, it's weird to me. Like everything's blurry, but this isn't happening right here. So what do we do? Well, there's a couple other ways you can do this. You could add another blur on top if you want. I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do a whole different style of animation that's gonna blur itself. That's right, I'm lazy and I want Premiere to do the blurring because I can. All right, so let's make a new sequence. Sequence, file new, sequence, blah, blah. And we're gonna do this. I'm just gonna label this method two so I'm not I don't have sequence one through 90 on my uh, project window there. Um, all right, so once again, bringing the footage in, we're gonna bring her right into layer one and this one into layer two. I'm gonna scooch this in, scooch in the timeline. And remember I said at the two second mark, we're gonna start our animation. Bam for marker, three second mark. Bam for marker and let's start working out here, all right. Cinch this up to this like so, and let's reanimate because I can. Now, before we, if when I hit Shift Five, I'm not going to animate the positional keyframes. I'm going to add a different effect. So let's go over to Effects here, and in the search box, hit Transform. And you're looking for this right here, Distort Transform, right here, and put that on your clip like so. And you're like, why would I need another set of position? Wait, what? What's going on here? Well, the way this works is that um, when you're using um, adjustment layers or other effects um, that require uh, shutter angles or blur, you have to use the transform function in, in Premiere. It just doesn't apply to the native transform function. So you really have two sets of transform. It's strange, I get it, if you're used to After Effects or pretty much any other app, you don't really have um, that. You, they do have this option in After Effects, but you can get away with using the native uh, positional information for most things. So anyway, I know that sounds confusing, but follow along with me and I'm gonna show you it's really cool. So anyway, it's no different than animating this position, this position, we're just animating this one right here. So let's go ahead and click this keyframe like so. And then go to our other marker right here and make a new keyframe like that, right? And then go back and then just move it over, just like we did last time, right? Make sure it's out of the frame. And then you go, right? Just like last time. All right, it slams into that brick wall just like we saw before. I hate that, so once again, zooming in. Grab that keyframe, right click on it, and turn it to ease in, move back. Wood shacky, cool, nice and smooth. Ah, you know what, okay. So you're like, Sean, you said this was gonna blur itself. I don't see blur, you're lying to me. I'm not lying to you, it's okay, relax. Go over here, right here where it says use com composition shutter angle and turn that off. And then turn this to 360 degrees. And that's gonna give you some like nice, nice blurriness. Check that out. Now obviously the lower the number, the less the blur. So if you want just a little bit less blur, cool. Even less blur. Cool. I want a ton of blur, so I'm putting that at 360. And I roll it back. Ah, now check that out. So there you go. Now you have yourself a slide transition in two different styles. Now what if you're like, wait a second, I don't want left to right, I want right to left. Okay, well if you've already got your animation built, it's as simple as just changing the very first keyframe, right? So let's go ahead and on this keyframe, the very first keyframe that we're animating, click reset parameter. Now your clip is back in the center. So let's say, well, I want it to come from the right. Okay, we'll just move it all the way over to the right. And hit spacebar. Cool. Or you're like, undo, I just want to do this to hit reset parameter. I want this to come from the top. Okay, so then just move it from up to the top. And hit play. See, now that's obviously really slow. So I would change all this timing best I can. Cinch it up. There you go, so. All right, 
So that's that simple. Now, I like the left to right better. So let's just go ahead and erase this keyframe. I'm going to do left to right because it's just what I did before for the example. Move this all the way over and hit play. Cool. So I like this. This is my timing from now on. I'm working on this project where every every single thing has to slide from left to right and I'm super happy. But the last thing I'm going to do is do this all over again. This just took way too much of my time. I'm too important for this, blah, 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 whatever it is. You know, I'm too busy. Uh, you know, my, my assistant editor quit on me, whatever. Uh, my cat bit my leg. I want to be able to recreate this uh, just by dragging and dropping and never building it again. So what do I do? Go ahead and highlight your layer two right here where you did all your animation and highlight this transform right here, right? And right click on it and hit save preset. I know that's difficult. And then call it something. Call it, this is my preset, right? And then you have to tell it, where is it coming from? Well, it's going to be start at the end point, right? This is where I want it to be in. And you can say, drag this, drag this to your end point. Like that. You can leave yourself a little note, OK? So let's go ahead and prove that what I did actually works. Go back over here to your media. And let's see. Let's just uh, start a new sequence so that things don't get messy. And I'll just. Put this thing on layer one here, like that, and this thing on layer two, and I'm going to drag a preset. So where, where are my presets? Go ahead and hit effects right here. Right here is where you just saved your preset. Under presets, twirl it down. Ah, this is my preset. And just drag it over like so, right? And hit spacebar. What? Yep. Oh, yeah. And it'll work on anything. I can. You know, duplicate this footage one more time, drag it up. I can drag my, my favorite little preset over. So it'll be like, wee, wee. See? So now you have the uh, drag and drop preset. You do that a couple hundred times and you've got yourself a whole library of presets. So that's it. I just showed you two different methods to make your own slide transitions. It takes no time whatsoever. It took longer because I was showing you how to do it, but now you're probably ripping through making your own presets and just, you know, going crazy. And that's, uh, a perfect time to let me tell you about a little thing I made called Premiere Essentials, which is, uh, was made in-house and it was designed for our in-house productions. And uh, we thought that uh, it would be useful and we uh, released it to the public for only 29 bucks. And it's a couple hundred presets of all kinds of things, you know, blurs, shakes, bumps, vignettes, uh, frame bouncing, frame animation. I mean, all kinds of stuff that we use all the time for our client projects. And it's only, like I said, it's only 29 bucks. But because you sat here and spent your time with me uh, listening to my tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and kick you down some love because we got nothing but love for each and every one of you. Um, go ahead and go to premiertemplates.net. That's where we put all of our Premiere Pro stuff, our, our presets and our templates and our project files. Go ahead and go to premiertemplates.net. I'm going to give you 20% off on top of the already low prices of these things. They're not going to be more than 29 bucks right now. They're either 19 or 29 bucks for whatever it is that's out there. And um, you know what? We like that. But I'm going to go ahead and give you 20% off on top of that. So go ahead and enter the coupon code RUNRAMPANT. That's R-U-N-R-A-M-P-A-N-T. And you'll get 20% off of anything that you can find at premiertemplates.net. Again, I can't thank you enough for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. We love hearing from each and every one of you. We love hearing you call us, email us, send us a, a smoke signal, pigeon, carrier pigeon, whatever, however it is you like to communicate, hit us up. And uh, thank you so much. Please do not forget to subscribe, to like, and to share. We run on love, people. These tutorials are free. I got nothing but love for you. So do me a favor and share this with your friends and family. Tell your neighbor about us. Heck, even get, have your dog give us a like. All right, thanks so much. My name is Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com. I will catch you later.